porn even your kid's school and yeah. and that's not something that a lot of people know so i cool. i am just among talented people and they're also hot you know <laughs> like a joke that you're if you're on a bruckheimer show you have to be super hot mm -hmm. and i'll just like look at everyone and i'm thinking you all look like models you're all insanely talented and you're all incredibly kind human beings. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then the other thing is too, we were shooting and this woman, she was probably like, oh, I don't know, maybe like 45 years old, like yeah. 50 years old. And Tom had worked like 12 hours and we were shooting outside and somehow she got past security yeah. and wanted an autograph and Tom like asked her name and talked to her for a little bit and and everyone is very aware that we would not be here without without you guys so mm. um there's no us and fans we're all part of this lucifer family together and and i feel like we all in a way are underdogs like even even i'm sure mm -hmm. we were kind of like the ugly stepchild of shows <laughs> i don't get it yeah. and now we've all kind of made it to the finish line and um and really it, it's like a total team effort so it's pretty awesome and as much as i've been on great shows with great casts i i think it's the best cast i've ever worked with oh that's fantastic it's a nice explanation as well don't discount yourself either when you said that you're working with everyone else who's like talented and hot oh, wrong words you saw some bright red hair as well you know you, you, you fit right in so okay every girl likes to be called hot you know <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so everyone's probably going, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> Excellent. Thank um, you. Following, I'll just throw in one question from Donna Jo while we're talking about the cast. Um, she asked, who, who in the cast is the prankster or the biggest prankster? Because from what you've just explained, it seems like everyone is. Lauren German. I know right. you would never expect it, but no. she is. She's a mischievous little soul, and <laughs> um, and you never see it coming. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you've been bamboozled by <laughs> this beautiful, perfect-looking girl. Yeah, she's she's a total prankster. <laughs> that one, cool. she's oh. up to no good. <laughs> Is there any pranks you can sort of elaborate on? I'll just throw this one in. What what's the um, funniest thing? She'll leave you know? like like she'll sneak in like cardboard cutouts. <laughs> In, and, and stick them in like Tom's bathroom trailer. So like when he comes in to use the bathroom, there's this like huge cardboard cutout. Oh god! <laughs> um, and and he won't see it coming. So yeah, she 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 has her fair share of, of <laughs> shenanigans. And then we'll she'll be on the text chain, and we'll be like, he'll be like, who did it? And she's like, oh my god, who would do something like that? Who would do something like that? So she's a bit of a ninja in mm -hmm. in that way where where you don't see it coming and all of a sudden you got cardboard cutouts in your trailer <laughs> stealth joker like it i like it <laughs> exactly. and you're right it's, that's just totally opposite to what people we see because we don't see that side of us so we just see this straight laced you know really serious yeah character on screen so that's no, just she brilliant is, <laughs> she's a bundle of fun she's she's one of my favorite human beings um, <laughs> it's her birthday today actually Yes, I have. I tweeted that out. Birthday, so, yeah, happy birthday Lauren. Yeah, happy birthday, Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> birthday so close together as well. It's a... And Leslie Ann's is on Friday. Is it? Oh, yeah, that's... and Tom was like 10 days ago. <laughs> it was, yeah. Mine's on Monday. Not that it matters, oh, but yeah, I'll just say. It's only birthday. I know, sadly, on the wrong side of 40 this time. I'm 41. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You look you look great for your age. <laughs> Thank never you. Know. <laughs> You're 20. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Right. Quinn is also just another question is when are you going to sing on the show? Oh, my God. Okay. Well, here's the here's a little funny story with my singing. So mm -hmm. I am not a singer. Okay. I okay. am not. But Warner Brothers asked me to sing the national anthem at the Dodgers game a few months ago. And the Dodger stadium holds like 40,000 people. Mm -hmm. And my initial instinct was hell no. <laughs> and then my friends reminded me that this whole year for me is about no fear. Yeah. So it's like, Amy, you said that 2016 was about no fear. So how can you tell other people to face their fear? If you're automatically super scared about singing in public and, and you're not facing your own fear. This is why I love my friends, because they yeah. call me on my bullshit. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, fine, you're right. So I trained for a few weeks, 
Yeah. And I sang a cappella. Mm -hmm. And even on YouTube, most people are like, oh, you sing so well. And a couple of people are like, she's not that good. And I'm like, but guys, <laughs> and then other people will defend, you know, defend. But I'm not like on American Idol. It was more of yeah. just me giving a sign of gratitude to being born, you know, in this country mm -hmm. and being proud of being American. And it was yeah. just a tribute to like, it's not about me singing. It was a tribute, right? Yeah. So, so since then, I've been a little bit gun shy about singing, but. I will say that I would be more than willing to sing on the show. Also, everyone sings on the show. Lauren has an incredible voice. She would never admit it. Mm -hmm. Tom mm -hmm. sings, as we all know. Yeah. Leslie Ann and Rachel sing. They just sang me a birthday song yesterday. Oh, that was, was awesome. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin sings. Everyone freaking sings on this show. <laughs> it's, it's like insane. So um, I would love to sing... I'm a better dancer than singer, but if the mm -hmm. writers do, I think Ella should have a secret karaoke hobby. And yeah. I actually have a question for the fans. Like, what hobby do you guys think Ella would have? Because I'm thinking like bowling, magic tricks, karaoke. Mm -hmm. So if there's any suggestions out there, I'm curious, like, what are Ella's hobbies as she knows about three-dimensional Star Trek chess, speaks Klingon, watches the shining and yeah. and so i'd be curious but i don't know whenever the writers let me sing i'll definitely sing and hopefully they'll let me dance as well excellent excellent well if you take it back to buffy you could actually get the writers ask them and you could have a musical for a musical show episode of lucifer like they did with buffy well that's been tossed around in the makeup trailer a lot because <laughs> everyone everyone sings right now i'm in charge of the mannequin challenge mm -hmm. so i don't know why fox put me in charge but they're like you can get people to do it <laughs> so i think we're gonna try to do it next week so that'll probably be the closest we'll get to like a group i've been trying to organize a group choreography and yeah. Lauren is not super excited about that, but we'll get her to do it. Um, but we'll see. I, I would love a musical episode, maybe an Empire, you know, <laughs> Empire Lucifer crossover. But that might be more of a season four thing. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool, though. <laughs> be cool. You never know. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Nate would like to know, do you want Ella to someday have an on-screen romance? Hell yeah. <laughs> I want an on-screen romance. Yes, even even nerds need to get some action. So that is an emphatic yes. I love, love, love some kind of love action on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get it down to Lucifer. He'll, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll fit you in the right way. Yeah, no, that sounded yeah. awful. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, think it's, I think you're about right. Yeah, yeah but yeah, we'll be on that level. Yeah, exactly. Nate, the other question for Nate then, following on from that, is what kind of guy do you think would be a good match for Ella? Oh, my God. That's a really good question. I think he'd have to be insanely smart, mm -hmm. very witty. I think he would have to be really funny and, like, make her laugh. Yeah, um, rules me out. <laughs> no. I <then that laughs> got you. <laughs> And fun. I think he'd have yeah. to be down for like adventures because mm -hmm. I feel like Ella and he'd also have to be really comfortable in his skin because I think Ella is the only character who doesn't have self-doubt mm -hmm. in the whole out of the whole cast. Right. Yeah. Everyone and everyone else has like ulterior motives. And Ella is just like what you see is what you get and no filter and no self-consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like she would have to have a guy who wouldn't be intimidated by that. Yeah. And obviously, you know, pretty cute. <laughs> Fair enough. But he doesn't have to be, like, model cute. I think he would have to be, like, you know, like Chris Hardwick cute. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Excellent. Rob Capel is saying, you've been in two shows with forensics now, obviously Dexter and Lucifer. Do you have any interest in forensics outside of acting, or have you developed an interest since being in those roles? Yeah. I've always loved to explore the human body, mm -hmm. and, and I guess I've realized how vulnerable we are. Like someone can just get stabbed in the wrong place, like you're done. But um, mm -hmm. but what I love about forensics is the macabre sense of humor. So when I talk to like women in science who are forensic scientists, they'll say mm -hmm. something like, oh my God, I went to the car crash, it was burned and I picked up a leg and it was awesome. <laughs> and, and out of context, that could sound really disturbing, but mm -hmm. what yeah. I love about, about characters like Ella and Masuka 
you know, from, from Dexter is that yeah. they have this kind of this, this warped kind of sense of humor that I always find like, totally tickling so yes i have taken an interest and just yeah realize a ball of vulnerability but also have really learned to admire that unique sense of humor mm -hmm. fair enough i think there is definitely i think when you have to work with something like that on a daily basis then you do have this one way to get through isn't it really <laughs> yeah i mean she's that. dealing with dead people all day long you yeah. know that's her job so so that's her escape i think is her humor yeah. And when you're dealing with dead people along, yeah, you might say things that are a little inappropriate to well, the living because yeah. you spend most of your time talking to the dead. Well, yeah, that's very, very true. You know, <laughs> the humor's a little stiff in the morgue. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. ba dong ching yes. <laughs> oh, see, that was very Ella. I call that an Ella-ism. <laughs> Excellent. Donna Jo and Wolf have got a very similar question. So it's, why did Ella ask Lucifer to go into church as a favor? And what was it like for her to walk into church with a man who calls himself the devil? Well, I love Ella's relationship with Lucifer because she makes these, she's a woman of faith and mm -hmm. she doesn't question it, but she yeah. also makes these like off the cuff comments about God where Lucifer is really struggling to define his relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So I think we see from the first introduction, that first scene is one of my favorite scenes of her because she's like, what did the devil do that was so bad? Yeah. You know, what, he asked a naked lady if she wanted an apple. He rebelled against his dad. Mm -hmm. And for him, he's like, um, excuse me, like, come again. Yeah. So I think irony would be an understatement. Mm -hmm. She obviously doesn't know that he's the devil. So yeah. for her, she had no idea she was bringing the devil to church. <laughs> You know, in a future episode, I'll give you a little getaway. She giveaway. She does call him warm and fuzzy on the inside. <laughs> so, so she, as far as as she's concerned, he's a big softy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he definitely doesn't like his sense of space to be invaded. Yeah. But she's all up in it. So she's hugging him constantly. She's touching him. She's patting him on the back. Mm -hmm. she, he's like her bro. You know. Yeah. So um, so I think that for her. She's not preachy about her faith. Mm -hmm. She's very clear about her faith. And I think that bringing the devil to church is is a total irony. And I think that Ella's faith in the future will come into play, especially when Lucifer is lost and doesn't know, you know, where his relationship with, with his dad is going. So I think mm -hmm. for Lucifer, Ella is a rock with no ulterior motives. They're the only relationship where they're not, they're not in love with each other. Mm -hmm. They're not at conflict with each other. They're not mad at each other. They're not trying to get something from each other. Yeah. It's probably the most pure relationship that Lucifer has with, with anyone. You know what I mean? There's no baggage between yeah. Ella and Lucifer. So it's a really refreshing, fun, playful relationship. But, it, but, but also, to bring him to church, I mean, she's the first person to ever do that. So, in a way, Ella's Ella's off the cuff lightness mm -hmm. is um, and he is is able to make the devil do things that he would never otherwise do. Yeah. So it's a testament to how much he is affected by her mm -hmm. for him to walk into a place that he would rather spend a millennia never going into. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the kind of wolf also asks in that vein as well especially topical to what your your answer was there is Ella do you think Ella is as immune to Lucifer's charms as Chloe is because she doesn't seem to fall for them as much or at all she's just because of the way she is yeah she doesn't yeah he's definitely like a panty dropper with all the other girls but um but yeah she doesn't I don't think she's as immune as Chloe is because there was a brief moment in episode five mm -hmm. where yeah. um, I don't know if people remember the what was the um, body bags, the body bags for like um, that that action hero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they were in the dojo, mm -hmm. I think. And, and there was a moment where for a second. Ella says to Lucifer, can I ask you a question? And, and Lucifer's like, I mean, we're at work, but yeah, we can knock one out in the room real quick. Yeah. <laughs> and for a split second, when Lucifer is doing his charms, mm -hmm. it falls, Ella's like, yeah, okay. And then she breaks out of it. And she's like, whoa, yeah. wait, 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 what? So when Lucifer turns on his celestial charm, mm -hmm. I don't think Ella's immune, um, immune, but I think when Lucifer is just being Lucifer, yeah. where yeah. he would 
totally swoon any other girl. I think with Ella, she's just like, yeah, that's that's Lucifer. He's my boy. You know what I mean? He's like, he's he's my bud.